Yeah, so here we are uh, again talking to another one of uh, the world's greatest experts. We're at uh, the Carmel Valley Ranch. Um, I believe that's in California. Uh, it certainly feels like it with the, with the wonderful weather that we have here. And today I'm with uh, Mr. Fred Schumacher. Hi, hey, Peter. Uh, an extraordinary person who wrote an extraordinary book. Um, back now I hear 1996, I believe, or 97. Yes. Um, and I just got a few questions for you about that. So, Fred, uh, extraordinary golf. What, what is it the heart? What is it the heart of your work? Hmm. At the basis of the work is that uh, it's people's uh, own awareness that makes a difference. Not concepts, not understanding, but the simple act of being present to what's happening in the moment. It's a rare thing. Most we've we've lauded uh, information and concepts, but the, the the act of being present to what's actually happening. You know how difficult it is to change things at all. Yeah. But how about attempting to change things that you haven't experienced? Well, that borders past difficult almost onto insanity. So it's a, it's a work that champions a person's experience, and their experience of what's going on can teach them far better than understanding can. So you, you know, from those particular words that I was uh, listening intently to, are you a mental school? Not at all. Actually, it might be exactly the opposite. When you talk to people about, and what I want you to do is take the club back straight up and come down from the inside, mm -hmm. that may be considered mental. Actually, we're physical school. When you're actually present to something, you experience it physically. See, I think one of the problems with golf is that most people are so stuck in their heads deeply, they don't experience their own body. Yeah. So how can you allow people to get out of their heads, into their own body, experience things so they can coach themselves later? See, it's all ultimately self-coaching. Yeah. You know, you're, you're with yourself more than you are with anyone else. And the measure of any program success is the day after, is how well people can coach themselves when they leave. Yeah. If they can, we succeed. If they can't, we don't. And that's what we're after. So uh, you differentiate between coaching and teaching. Fred, how are, how are they different? Well, teaching in some aspects says something like this. I'm an expert in knowledge. I'm going to transfer my knowledge to you. And if you get my knowledge and apply it and apply the models that I use, you can eventually go out and play. That's what teaching yeah. is. Coaching is something like this. I know there's something already in there. I know you already have something. Let's lead it out. Yeah. I've given 41,000 lessons. And no one has ever come and said, listen, I have everything I need. I'm whole. I'm complete. <laughs> I'm lacking in some awareness. Could you lead out of me something that's already in there? And to me, that's, that's the truth about it all. People are remarkable, and they don't see how remarkable they are. And what leads it out is not so much the un understanding and concepts, but people becoming more and more subtle awareness of what's actually happening in their own body. And so I think that's the difference in coaching and teaching. Uh -huh. Teaching says, I know when I give it to you. Coaching is something like, I know you know, and the game is, let's bring it out. Yeah, I understand completely. So uh, what models do you use for students? Tiger, Ernie, Annika? Not at all. So let's suppose this. Suppose we create an exercise that a student catches themselves in being extraordinary. Something like this. We walk up and have students hit golf balls. And then we say, hey, if someone just snitched your wallet, go ahead and throw this golf club at them, see if you can slow them down. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an, it's an exercise that people do when they're just being themselves and literally just responding and reacting. We film it though. Yeah. Then after we film, we come back in a room and they take a look at their golf swing and it's usual people's golf swings, the club's going over the top and so forth. Then they take a look at this, this particular motion. And this is, this, I can't tell you how many thousands and thousands of times it happened. People look at this and they say, that's really a remarkable motion. I didn't know I could do that. Not only technically more sound, but in answering your question, it becomes the model for them to use. People's model is their own self. Yeah. Their own self when they're being themselves, when they're connected to the target, when they're letting go. So when you see what's possible for them, even as a coach, you now have a blueprint for where we're going with this. And the game becomes, how can a person coach themselves into being themselves? And, you know, most golf lessons, people say, I don't want to be myself. I suck. I'd like to be somebody <laughs> better. <laughs> but if you could really have people see in clear pictures that who they are is pretty remarkable, yeah. then the game becomes different. How do I get out what's already in there and how do I interfere with it? And that's the game we play. So do you believe everyone has talent for this game at any age? Absolutely. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. See, I think that we're so steeped in mediocrity so steeped in thinking we're not good enough, so steeped in thinking we, aren't, we, we don't have what it takes, that, that to have someone say, this is part of extraordinary golf, what yeah. you could say, is that human beings are already extraordinary. 
And in fact, this body is a genius. It's gone through thousands of years of evolution. And to allow the, the person to train themselves outside of their mental know into their body and allow their body to work is quite uh, remarkable. So what do you think are the really uh, great attributes of a great student? The capacity to be present. Yeah. To be out of your head. The ability to, when judgments arise, to let go of them. A great student is someone who can create a non-judgmental, non-evaluative environment with themselves. See, at some level, jo Peter, you're and I job, and when it comes down to the bottom, it is an environmentalist. Yeah. Our job is to create an environment in which, in which it's safe to learn, in yeah. which it's safe without judgment and evaluation. Yeah. So a great student is someone who can create that environment when they're alone. And in that environment, it allows for a kind of presence and the subtlety of their own attention that they can't get in any other. And that allows for rapid learning? Yeah, see, the only time you can learn, really learn in this game, is when you're present. I mean, learning happens now. Now, it's the only time it can happen. So, when I'm in my head, with past and future, thinking about remembering, I'm not here in this moment. So we're not trained in life to be in this moment, here. And when a student can actually bring their attention here and let go of the stories and the evaluations, in that moment, it's the only moment learning happens. Let's suppose a student hits a, uh, in a lesson, they'll hit 100 golf balls. Each golf ball takes two seconds. They have 200 seconds, or a little more than three minutes, in which they can, the, the time in which they can be present. If they're not present in that three minutes, I don't care who the teacher is, they're not gonna learn anything. So, my job is to create a kind of environment that wouldn't have happened on their own. If it would happen on their own, just let them go practice. Yeah. But the amount of time a person is actually practicing, you no, know, actually being present while they practice is the measure of how much learning gets done. And if they're present to critical variables that make a difference, we really often have a lot of velocity in the lesson. So do you strive for performance for yourself and your students? Absolutely. But performance in a balance. See, when, when you come home from, uh, from work, Let's say, if you, let's suppose you're a normal businessman, you come home from work, no one asks you, rarely do they ask you at the end of the day, what did you learn today? What did you learn at the end of the work that I could learn with you and from you? Everybody asks, how'd you do? What'd you perform? What'd you shoot? How good are you? What kind of job do you have? How much money do you learn? earn? We're finding that people who keep their attention on learning and enjoyment are the people who perform best in circumstances when they need to. Yeah. So your performance tomorrow does not depend on your performance today. You'd be surprised at how many golfers and how many businesses don't get that. Yeah. Your performance tomorrow depends on your learning today. And we're calling learning something very specific, growing your awareness. Yeah. And if you're not learning something new, I mean, in other words, having your awareness crease in blind spots, and if you're not learning that today, you have no right ever to expect tomorrow's performance to yeah. be better. So what are the most uh, satisfying aspects of your work, Fred? That people can, uh, can play the kind of game not only just physically, and not only just in score-wise, but they have a deep satisfaction for the game, a kind of a joy that's rarely seen. They have a sense of a, a kind of a spirit that golf can renew their spirit. And when they leave the golf course, interestingly enough, see the, I'm sure you've heard this many times, the purpose of golf may not be just to be good at it. Because Peter, you being good at golf isn't gonna do you much good. No. But if you could leave the golf course learning how to concentrate, yeah. Trust yourself. Yeah. Learning how to learn. Learning how to overcome obstacles. If you walk, if you leave the gates of this golf course, and you're a better citizen because of it, you have better relationships. You listen more and get out of your head. Golf has fulfilled the promise that I think it was intended to have. That a game can teach you something about living. And if you have that along with the game itself, I think you've got something that not only will be satisfying for you, will be, be so passionate about you can't stay away. So we don't ask people that they should practice. I don't think anybody should practice. But if they think they find something so fascinating to them that they can't stay away, then the game just sweeps them away. And I'm more in love with golf now than I've ever been. It's my 54th year. I'm playing the best golf of my life, and I'm fascinated with it. And the only reason I could say that why it was better than last year and maybe the year before is I've grown my awareness a little bit and I'm less in my head on the golf course than in the rest of my life. I'm more present, more just being here. And I find that very compelling. Anything in your life that you're present with, whether it be dance, whether it be playing music, whether it be even sewing, if you find that time disappears, and in a sense you disappear as like a story, you'll love that thing. And I think golf can be that for people. I don't think it takes that much.
absolutely. You know, I had one more question, and that was, uh, what does your work make possible? But you know, I think that you you probably didn't encompass the, that yeah. in that particular answer. You know, and what I felt here in in these few brief moments that we were together is again that uh, um, that focus in on you and your words and and how I was learning even as you spoke during that. So I, I thank you for that, and uh, You're welcome, Peter. I'm going to take that experience uh, onto the uh, onto the tournament that I'm playing in Vegas well, good. later on next week. To be continued. Right. Thank you for uh, being such a wonderful host and thank you for uh, agreeing to do this and uh, I look forward to working with you more. Thanks. You're welcome, Peter. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.